Hi, I'm Dr. Daniel Haynes. I'm a historian at the University of Bristol in the UK. Hello, my name is Dr. Max Werner. I'm also at the University of Bristol, but I'm a seismologist. I study earthquakes. This short program is about our journey towards understanding a little bit about Bhutan's history and its heritage. History is important because it helps us know who we are. We can look at the past to understand where we came from and think about where we're going next. But history is also critical for understanding science. It's important for me as a seismologist to understand what kinds of earthquakes have occurred in the past, what kind of destruction they have caused, because that helps us understand the future seismic hazard in Bhutan and in other places, uh, so that we can learn about what kinds of earthquakes might happen in the future. So today we're going to find out how historians find out new information and the kind of working methods that they use and we're also going to talk about the way that historians and scientists can work together to help countries like Bhutan, which suffer risks from earthquakes. So Dan, why have you brought me up this really steep mountain? To teach you something about history, Max. We're here at Simtoka Zong, the oldest Zong in Bhutan. It was built in 1629 by the unifier of the country. Zongs like this are spread all across Bhutan and have been for about 400 years. And they contain an invaluable wealth of information about Bhutan's past. That's really interesting, Dan. Um, so you're telling me that over the po f past 400 years, it's possible that uh, people have recorded uh, the occurrences of large destructive earthquakes that scientists like myself could go and study? Let's find out. Zongs like these contain important historical sources, and perhaps the most important of all are the biographies of Bhutan's major religious figures. These biographies generally tell us about the things that their authors were concerned about, and those typically were the life and works of the religious figures and the impact that they had on the disciples and the enlightenment that they helped to spread. They can also tell us things about Bhutan's history and society, uh, religion and politics. And in the case of biographies of religious figures, we usually expect to see descriptions of the life and works of those figures and the impact they had on their disciples. But sometimes they also contain useful information about earthquakes, particularly where a religious figure themselves experienced one. One great example, which historians used last year to understand a major earthquake better, is the biography, or rather the autobiography, of the ninth J. Kempo, Shacho Rinchen. There's a description of the 1714 earthquake in this book about the life and times of Noan Gelsen, a great religious master. In 1713, Ganapati Noan Kinga Gelsen was assassinated. The biographer describes the natural environment to be gloomy, accompanied by many bad omens such as the occurrence of violent storms. From the 20th day of the third month, corresponding to 1714, a violent earthquake is reported to have visited the area, with aftershocks continuing for about a month. In one day, one could feel the tremors up to 30 times, with the result that many houses and huts collapsed. The Panaka Zong also swayed back and forth and seemed in imminent danger of collapse, prompting the monk community, including the Jay Kempo, to move out of the Zong and to seek shelter on the ground outside. All the people panicked and did not know what to do. Wondering what would be the best means to repel the bad omens that had translated into earthquakes, Desi Druk Rubgi sought a timely solution by way of divination and received the following advice. Avoid the ten non-virtuous deeds and make the law of the land strict. Religious practitioners must vigorously practice meditative approach and accomplishment. In particular, it would be propitious if fire pujas are conducted in order to implement the four magic karma activities, only then the huge earthquake will subside and all bad omens gradually allay. The government accordingly carried out all the necessary rites of aversion implied in the divination, and the tremors gradually subsided, as did other calamitous signs. This description tells us a huge amount about how people at the time interpreted the earthquake and the meaning that they assigned to it. But we can get even more information about what actually happened on that day in 1714, from the autobiography of the ninth J. Kempo himself, who was at the time a child. 
This is really exciting to me as a historian because this is where we go to the original primary source, directly from the author who observed these events happen in the past. That spring, there occurred in Bhutan the great terror of an earthquake that pulverized all houses and huts in every direction. All districts echoed with the fierce wailing of grief for the many people who had died beneath collapsed houses. Clouds of dust darkened the sunlight as if obscured by fog. I was then a child, the J. Kempo writes, sleeping beneath my mother's bed. And when our house collapsed, it killed my mother outright. The calf of my leg was pinched in the crack of a split wooden beam, which held me suspended head down, wailing in great pain and darkness, mouth and nose filled with dust. My father and a group of other survivors dug me out from under the rubble of earth, stones and wood the next day, extracting me slowly and with great difficulty, my calf suffering a severe scrape wound. We know from the rest of the autobiography that many other houses in the village collapsed. And we've been able to pinpoint this to the district of Wangdu Frogdram. And my colleague Max will now explain why this is useful and interesting to scientists as well as to historians. Hello. Let's summarize what you've heard so far. Bhutan has a really rich history stretching back at least 400 years. Two, Zongs, monasteries, and the National Library have lots of records of historical events, including earthquakes, that can tell us about past disasters in Bhutan and perhaps in the surrounding regions around Bhutan. But what do these past earthquakes tell us about the future and future disasters that might occur here in Bhutan? To find out more, I've come to talk to experts here at the Department of Geology and Mines. Come follow me inside. You? Hello, Max. How are you? I'm very good. Good to see you. To Thanks see you. very much for your time and Thank energy. You. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to ask you a few questions about your work. Sure. So my first question to you about you is, could you tell us what is a seismologist? What do you do? Well, uh, seismology basically is the study of uh, earthquakes. Uh, it's source forces and it's associated risks uh, to the environment and the, the place that we live in. And uh, uh, seismologists basically look at uh, earthquake that happens all around the world and they try to locate uh, the event uh, and also try to estimate uh, the magnitude to wherever it occurs. So that's the, basically what seismology does. I see that you have a map here of Bhutan yes. and you have some red dots on the map. Um, could you explain to us what those red dots are and what you are measuring? Right, right. Well, uh, the map that you see here is basically depicting uh, the seismic monitoring systems that we have been uh, able to establish with the funding support from World Bank. And over the past uh, couple of years, we've been able to establish six uh, seismometers that monitors uh, earthquakes that uh, happens in the region and within the country and with this we will be able to monitor any seismic events that occur uh, within the territory and even in fact in the region. Thank you. Um, so on the right I see lots of black wiggles. Um, could you explain to me what are we what are we looking at? This is a very interesting event that uh, I looked at uh, this morning. In fact this event happened on uh, April 14, 2017 and if you look here uh, this is an uh, earthquake. I am pretty sure this is a local event. And the interesting thing that is, I also look at the USGS uh, uh, seismic uh, catalog, and they haven't shown any events that are uh, within, uh, within the uh, uh, South Asia region, and which definitely means that this is a local event. Earlier in the program, you learned uh, that renowned historian Dr. Karma Funso discovered new information about an earthquake that occurred in 1714 through the analysis of historical archive records. How did that information help us determine or estimate the magnitude of that earthquake in 1714? Well, uh basically they used uh, information from uh, different locations 
for example from uh, Gangdu and uh, places in Ongdu and based on the uh, the intensity or the uh, the level of damage observed in in each specific area uh, and uh, uh, that's not only it I mean that's one way to uh, gather information uh, but uh, more than that uh, the paleo seismological studies conducted by uh, DGM in partnership with the University of uh, Montpellier in France uh, constant uh, the the timing of the uh, event as well as uh, the possible uh, size of the earthquake so uh, that way I mean combining historical information with uh, information coming from uh, paleo seismology help us to understand uh, the magnitude better but uh, the, uh, there, there is still a, some uh, an uncertainty in terms of uh, the magnitude for example the, based on their uh, findings the, uh, the estimate is around 8 uh, plus or minus 0 0.5 so there's still some uncertainty that's a very large earthquake it's indeed a very very large earthquake and uh, the uh, fact uh, of the matter is Bhutan can have a similar event in near future uh, we don't know for sure when it's going to happen like I mentioned earlier prediction about earthquake is not possible so but the important thing is I think we need to prepare for uh, the worst case scenario. It, it seems that historical information can tell us a lot about earthquakes that happened before we had seismic uh, seismometers and scientific instruments as we have today to measure earthquakes. So we have to rely on historical accounts to understand where earthquakes happened, how big those earthquakes were, and how much destruction they, they, um, they caused. So in your estimation, could you tell us why is it important to know about large past earthquakes? Why is that important for the future? Yes. Well, uh, I think it is important to know uh, in any, any situation, important to know the enemy. So the enemy here is uh, earthquake. And uh, if you know the, the past historical trend, uh, that would help us in confronting challenges that are faced with uh, uh, a seismic hazard so in a way uh, there are ways that uh, we can uh, adopt to uh, know historical large uh, scale earthquakes one is by looking at uh, documentations which you guys are doing uh, through uh, historical archives in the zone or in the monastery the other way that we DGM in partnership with our uh, uh, foreign coll collaborators are doing is looking at the uh, alluvial terraces in, in, in southern Bhutan. Uh, uh, there are telltale signs of uh, historical uh, uh, events that are recorded in those, those alluvial terraces uh, and gives you a very rough estimate of when exactly those uh, big earthquakes happen in the earthquake. And it is very important, I think, for you just uh, both from uh, scientific as well as from uh, uh, adopting from uh, strategy to uh, build resilience uh, towards seismic hazard. Dr. Drogba, why are there earthquakes in Bhutan? Well, uh, Bhutan is uh, part of the 2500 uh, kilometer Himalayan arc and uh, as you may know that the Himalayas are formed due to uh, the coalition of two continents, uh, the Indian continental plate and the Eurasian continental plate that the coalition uh, uh, took place about 550 million years ago or so. Uh, so that's why, I mean, because of the two continents colliding and uh, since both the continent, uh, the, uh, since you have two continents, uh, they are equally buoyant. So they rise up and, and in the event, the India, uh, in the, the Indian plate pushes underneath uh, the Himalayas and uh, whenever uh, the stress are being accumulated over a long period of time uh, the, that uh, stress or the stain build up over a long period has to be released in form of a large earthquake so that's why we have a lot of uh, seismicity uh, and in fact we fall on the, along the uh, plate boundaries in, uh, in plate tectonic terms we call plate boundaries so that's why we have a lot of seismic events in the Himalayas so it sounds like we know a lot about earthquakes, but can we predict earthquakes? 
Well, uh, prediction of earthquake is uh, very challenging because we don't know the uh, earthquake uh, source uh, process very well. How can Bhutan prepare itself for future earthquakes? Well, uh, uh, there are many ways that uh, we can uh, confirm or prepare for uh, large, uh, large events. Uh, one of the ways is, I mean, uh, definitely to dip, uh, build up the seismic monitoring capacity to assess uh, uh, the seismic hazard, which is the earthquake. And the other one is to uh, strengthen uh, building codes. Uh, and for that too, we need to uh, do a lot of scientific studies uh, prior to coming up with a robust building code. And uh, the other uh, approach is to, uh, of course, uh, uh, kind of uh, rigorous uh, dissemination of information uh, to, uh, through advocacy and uh, information dissemination. Uh, disaster management uh, department is playing uh, important role in the terms of uh, uh, disseminating information, what should people do during earthquake and uh, and uh, those are the approaches, important approaches that uh, uh, you can uh, confirm to big uh, seismic events. Why is it important to know about past earthquakes for estimating the future earthquake potential? Well, uh, to understand uh, past uh, historical earthquake, I think it's important uh, in the sense that if we in, in general cases, I think there's a trend, uh, especially in terms of recurrence uh, event, uh, especially pertaining to large uh, seismic events. And if we can uh, come up with analysis of, uh, of uh, when that uh, events, big events recur reoccur, uh, proper planning and uh, uh, measures can be in place. You've heard earlier that there was an earthquake that we found out about uh, from a historical record that detailed the destruction of a village that the ninth J. Kempo uh, was born in, in 1714. My last question is, do you know the magnitude of that earthquake now through the historical records? Well, it becomes uh, that much difficult with the limited information that we have but uh, constraining the magnitude is uh, even more difficult. Uh, based on studies carried out by a recent publication made by George Hetany at the uh, University of uh, Lausanne in Switzerland, they have done some kind of simulation to assess based on uh, the location of uh, damages, particularly in Ongdu and Gangte area, and also based uh, the inputs from the paleo seismology that we have uh, carried out in Sarpang area. So there is uh, a kind of uh, better estimate on the, on the magnitude and apparently the magnitude uh, is around uh, 8 plus or minus uh, 0 0.5. So that uh, is a huge earthquake that uh, occurred about 300 years ago in Bhutan. Thank you very much for your time, uh, Dr. Drukpa. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Max. So I'm here at the Loden Foundation with Mr. Samten Yashi, senior researcher. Samten, could you tell us what the Loden Foundation is and what kind of work you do here? Uh, well, uh, Loden Foundation as a uh, well, uh, organization, organization as a whole, uh, we have several programs which focus on entrepreneurship, uh, education, which is uh, scholarship, and uh, early learning centers and uh, the fourth one with, uh, which we have is the cultural program so we have uh, generally uh, four programs which which has a specific focus being a teacher as well as a researcher in the uk my heart is always committed to education but i'm here to talk about bhutan's history and culture so maybe you could tell us some more about the cultural program uh, our culture program, which is uh, which we call it as a Shijin culture program, the Lodin Shijin culture program, the Shijin, which deep meaning, uh, which have a relation between the education and cultural knowledge, which she means the knowledge, and Jin means continuity. So our this program focuses or aims on preserving the culture for future generations. 
So that's why we call Shijin Culture Program. And then what we do is we uh, we have been doing uh, textual and ethnographic documentation so far, which will also focus on certain analytical research and studies later on as well. Mm -hmm. And why is it important for Shijin researchers to reveal the culture and the heritage of Bhutan? As we know, Bhutan is uh, developing very fast. And for instance, uh, what our researchers would tell is the road points and the, the, the cutting of the roads and electric poles and internet connections are reaching the, the rural corners very fast, which is, which is the key element which is I mean, uh, affecting the cultural you know, changes within the society. So therefore, before these things you know, covers up the country, the small country, so we thought, I mean, we uh, realized the need of you know, documenting and preserving these cultures before it's too late. So as we can see, Bhutan's history and culture is extremely important and the Lodem Foundation is doing a huge amount of work to preserve and record it. Mr. Samten Yeshi, thank you very much. Thank you. Naturally, when researchers like me and Max come from abroad to work in Bhutan, we need the support and help of Bhutanese organizations and Bhutanese people themselves. And the Lodin Foundation has partnered with us in this investigation into historical earthquakes in the country. Recently, Max and I traveled to Panakazonka with Mr. Sonam Chopel, a cultural researcher here at the Lodin Foundation. Sonam, could you tell the viewers about the work we were doing in Panaka? On the 18th of April, uh, before we moved to the Punaka, we have an important discussion with some scholars, uh, the again, the chief researcher, Lopin uh, Kizantini, and Lam Kizam, and Gimbo Selim at the National Library in Tilbu, and for discussing about the information of the article, where we get information, and they mentioned some of the accounts of uh, great saints in the past. So it is a great pleasure we find some important information about artwork which was written by the Gilwa Shachar in the Ninth J. Kimbo and uh, uh, Lama, but uh, the lecture of the Nalinda Monastery, she showed all the all the manuscripts, scriptures which was written by the Ninth J. Kimbo and uh, we found the two pages of the archive information about uh, about which which was written by the Kewashacha uh, and uh, but uh, in the in the in the two course of conversations, we come to know about uh, the so many uh, old scriptures mm -hmm. of the Kewashacha uh, and uh, there are thirteen chapter in the one volume of the book, and we finally uh, search for the uh, evidence uh, or the uh, information of the earthquake in the uh, volume of the book, mm. leg bump. So in the chapter two, we find uh, two pages about, um, uh, about the uh, archive information, uh, uh, how he endured uh, difficulties and hardship when she was just uh, four years old, when she wa uh, while, we, while she uh, was sleeping on the lap of her mother. So finally, her mother was uh, killed on the spot uh, due to the earthquake shock uh, that was happened in the, during the time of is, uh, when she was just uh, 40 years old. That was really exciting and that was the original text that I read to you some of earlier. And you can see what a big task it is to go and find new historical information. It takes travel, it takes dedication, and it takes experts like Sonam who are able to talk with uh, the Lamas and explain to them the kind of work we're doing and why it's important. Sonam, it was very gratifying that the Lamas were enthusiastic about our work. Why was it important to them that researchers should be coming to find out about earthquakes? Uh, most of the temple, uh, head of the temple, they respond in good men. They are very supportive and they are very interested in enthusiasm to learn about how our, how our Buddhist philosophy and scientific uh, uh, research uh, in the, uh, would be in the intercon interconnected. So they are very interested in learn to if if they, if they if you the you the most senior researchers do some carotating what was happened in the past mm -hmm. and if the if you, if the uh, scripture of the great saints uh, return about the, uh, information of the ark in which in, in which year and where it uh, happened so they find out uh, 
whether the scientific method will prove or not to whether it give us same in, uh, tally information or also, uh, information or not. They are very interested to learn whether it is uh, because uh, they are more uh, since uh, because they are very more interested in learning about the scientific method also, and that's why they are whether the scientific methods and the Buddhist philosophy are co interrelated or not. So in, in the in the field of uh, uh, archive information, as you can see, the integration of religious approaches and historical approaches with the scientific approach is something that's really important here in Bhutan. And we were incredibly pleased that people we met understood that and offered us their kind help. We will continue to work with the Loden Foundation to examine more biographies and try to discover more instances of earthquakes. Mr. Sonam Chopel, cultural researcher, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. you might wonder, what actually is an earthquake? An earthquake can shake the ground and it can shake buildings until they start collapsing and it can cause lots of destruction. But why does the earth shake? Well, earthquakes actually occur deep beneath the surface. So let us assume here's the surface, the ground that we are standing on, and here's a building. Much below the ground, earthquakes actually cause breaking off the rocks and sliding off the rocks. So you might have a break in the earth where a part of the earth is moving in one direction and another part of the earth is moving in a different direction. Here rocks are breaking and they're sliding past each other. When this happens seismic waves are generated and they travel through the earth and they reach the surface and they can shake buildings and they cause the ground to shake. When you drop a rock into a pond, you can see the water waves that are traveling outward. Earthquakes and the ground shaking occur in similar ways. You have the earthquake that is like the rock that's being dropped in the pond, and you have seismic waves that are traveling outward away from the actual breaking of rocks, and that's causing shaking in the earth, including on the surface. So the image of the rock falling into the pond is uh, similar to earthquakes and seismic waves traveling outward. To find out more about Bhutanese history and how we can learn more about the past and whether we can find more data about earthquakes, I've come to talk to Lopen Kunzantinle, one of Bhutan's most renowned, uh, well-known and senior scholars. Lopen, in your work, have you found any mention of earthquakes? <laughs> Chinatumatu, no disapas, 
over the last few days, I've visited several zones in parts of Western Bhutan and I've gone to the National Library here in Timpu to see where scholars like the Lopen work. And it seems that there are a great deal of challenges facing the historian of Bhutan. Lopen, could you tell us what these challenges are? I know that you and other scholars at the National Library are engaged in a big effort to find out new information about the history of Bhutan and to give us a much better understanding of the country's past. Perhaps you could explain what you're doing. Thank you very much, Lofen. So, Max, maybe you can explain something to me. I understand that the account that Chakya Rikchen wrote in his autobiography about the earthquake he experienced as a child is tragic as well as fascinating. But surely we already know that earthquakes can cause damage and destruction. So what did scientists learn from Shakya Rinchen's account that we didn't already know about earthquakes in Bhutan? What we didn't know before this important discovery was that large damaging earthquakes of magnitude 8 and perhaps larger could also happen in Bhutan. Previously, we had known that large damaging earthquakes of magnitude 8 and perhaps larger could happen elsewhere along the Himalayan arc, like in Nepal, in India, along the entire Himalayan arc but we had no concrete proof that large damaging earthquakes of magnitude 8 and larger could happen in Bhutan. This important historical research together with geological information helped us understand that these damaging earthquakes of magnitude 8 could also happen right here underneath our feet in Bhutan. So that is why this piece of historical research is absolutely critical for our understanding of the potential of future earthquakes in Bhutan because if it's happened in the past, then it may happen again in the future. So historians like me and scientists like you can work together to find out about the earthquake risk in countries like Bhutan. Is that why you're here? That is indeed why I'm here, uh, to learn more about past earthquakes so we can determine the risk from future earthquakes in Bhutan. Mm -hmm.